It's actually really awesome to be here today because exactly one year ago, I quit my job and went into doing this whole like teaching view and writing articles and creating courses and books and stuff um, full time. So uh, thank you for having me. So I'd like to talk to you about clean components. And in talking with uh, different people in the community and seeing what questions are asked on Twitter and things that I get in my email inbox, I have, have seen two fundamental questions come up again and again. The first is that we want to know when do we create new components? Do we create smaller components? Or do we create bigger components? And like, is this component like too big or too complicated? Should we pull it out into something else? And so this is like something that we, we deal with every single day. But once we've figured that out, we also need to figure out how we do this well. And it's not just about moving pieces of code around in your file system and like doing all sorts of of things like that, but we actually want to simplify our code base and make our code easier to use. So in this talk, we will cover three main things, patterns and methods for how to write cleaner components and to simplify our code. And we'll just scratch the surface of these two questions because they're pretty huge questions. Um, but hopefully you'll come away from this with a couple uh, things that you can apply. So we're going to cover um, some patterns there. And at the end, we're also going to cover when not to create new components. So the first set of patterns is around VFs. And they're really nice because we can basically look at the different branches and most of the time we can extract the code that's in the body of each branch without needing to know much more about the code that's going on there. And we know that we can do this because of two things. The first one is that each branch of, the, of this conditional is semantically related. So the code that, that goes into each different branch works together for the same purpose. You might know this as cohesion, um, but really we're just, we're just talking about code that works together. And the second reason is similar uh, or related to that, and it's that not only does each branch uh, work together, but each different branch is distinct. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't have a conditional. You would just you know, have your code, code run. So to see this in more detail, we're going to take a look at a, uh, an example. And this example is, oh, I forgot to connect to the Wi-Fi here. So we will not be looking at this example. <laughs> so I'll just give you a quick explanation. It's a component that shows a list of articles on my blog. So either you have an expanded view that shows like the date and the description, or you can have the collapsed version that shows at the end of the blog post all like the different related articles. So this is the code for that component. Um, and I don't expect you to read through this whole thing right now. Um, I will have my slides available later on, so just so you know. Um, yeah, so you can see that at the top level we have a VF there with the uh, two different bodies of this branch here. And they do different things. One is a collapsed version, one is an expanded version, but they, although they're similar, they, they do, um, although they are different, they are sharing some code in there. So they look similar. But we can refactor that, pulling out into 
separate components. And not only is this code shorter, but it's much easier to read at a glance. We can easily see article collapsed and article expanded and know that's the intention of what this code does. And this is what self-documenting code is like. It tells us what it does as we read it without us having to you know, think deeply about what's the different conditions and all the different things that are going on. Uh, and one, one quick pattern that I wanted to, to throw in here but don't have time to go into, uh, into depth is that we can take all of this V4 logic here and we can actually push it into the child component. And the reasoning behind this is similar to preferring methods like filter and map and reduce over just writing out your for loop every single time. So what do we do when the branches are, even though they're distinct, they are quite similar? Well, something that we can do with this VF here is that we can take that VF and actually push it down into the child component. So we're taking the complexity from this parent component and putting it into the child component. So in our instance here, we have this uh, the parent component here with our collapsed and expanded components and respectively, they look something like this. So we've got a Nuxt link in each one and the expanded one also has um, some paragraph tags there. And if we combine it, we, we might get something like this article display component where we have taken the code that's similar and you know, shoved it together and made it into one component that's um, a little bit longer, but not too bad. And of course, we have to take that conditional and now move it down into the child. So we have a few different things going on here. We've got this V show where we have to switch based on this collapse prop. Um, and then the, the paragraph tags at the bottom, we're going to, to conditionally render as well. And then um, we also have to compute the class because one is Flexbox, the other is Grid. In theory, you can you know, make it a single column grid inside of Flexbox, but uh, this, is, this is just the first step in our refactoring here. So in the end, by shoving this, this, this VF conditional from the parent into the child, our parent component now becomes kind of pointless and perhaps we could even get rid of it. But we do have a, a pretty big problem in my mind. And so that leaves us with when not to create this component. And so we have this short component, but because we've taken two components that do different things and we've combined them together, we have actually made this component a lot more complex. And in practicing this talk and, and writing out my slides, after, after a bit, I realized that there's actually a bug in this code, which I, I didn't realize at first, because it is more complex. This V show, uh, the, this collapse here, I should have removed that, that negation. And so at first, it's easy to miss that kind of a thing because um, there's lots of things going on here and, and to understand this code and what's going on, it's a lot of thinking, a lot of you know, step by step looking through and trying to determine what is going on here. And so this is ultimately uh, a question of, is it better to keep is it better to remove duplicated code or not? And uh, lots of people like to follow dry, don't repeat yourself. But actually, don't repeat yourself is more about the knowledge and 
the intent behind the code and not the actual characters on the screen. And so although those components look the same, they actually represent very different intents. And so combining them together in this case was actually a mistake. So we want to revert back to what we had before with this parent component here. And then take this, these article collapsed and article expanded components and uh, yeah, and separate them out. So we have two simple components instead of one more complex, harder to understand component. So that is the, the three patterns that I wanted to cover here. And so um, now is the end of the talk where I get to shamelessly promote myself for a little bit. And I am working on a new course, which should be coming out in a couple months, which talks more about these kinds of patterns and goes more into depth about how do we create new components? How do we do that well? And, and a couple other related concepts. Uh, so if you want more information about that, you can follow me on Twitter or anywhere online and I'll be talking about that. I have also, um, I'm the instructor for Mastering Next 3, which is in partnership with View School. And uh, if you want to learn Next 3, how to do full stack development, um, we cover everything from the basics all the way to uh, authentication and integrating with Stripe and all that kind of stuff with that. Uh, and then, of course, there is this book as well, if you want to uh, get that online. There's also a, an ebook version, so you don't have to have to have the physical copy. And there are my links and information. <laughs>